Hi, uh, good evening all of you. Uh, waiting for uh, Sharmada to uh, join. Yeah, Sharmada is, uh, is coming. Hi, sir. Hi. Uh, Hi. Sharmada. Sharmada. How, How are you? How are you? I'm good, sir. Can you hear me? Okay? All good. Can you All speak good. up, please? Can you speak up, please? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Do, are you yeah. Are you, are you, you have a speaker something on? Uh, no, sir. Because I get an echo. I get an echo from your phone. Uh-oh. You have a Do you headphone or something? Do you want me to get it? Uh, can you try? Uh, can you try? Yeah, just, uh, getting out of it. Getting out of it. Okay, just give me one second, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, please wait. Guys, uh, please wait. Good evening, all of you. 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 Unfortunately, Unfortunately yeah, uh, in a lockdown. Are you headphones on? Yeah, I'm just putting them on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is good actually. I think something to hum your speaker side. I mean. Anyway, yeah, technology is not our uh, strength, at least mine. <laughs> I don't know about you. I mean, you're so creative. <laughs> be, I'm sure uh, you know, expert in most of those things. So, <laughs> no, sir. Uh, I'm actually not that great with technology either. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Sarmada, uh, good evening and uh, welcome to Indian uh, Tennis Daily. Thanks for uh, joining in. Uh, how, I mean, how familiar are you with Indian Tennis uh, Daily? Uh, thanks for having me, sir. First of all, and yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it. I've been following them, I think, since they've started, and it's just uh, it's great because you get all the updates in one platform. And I know that you know it's a bunch of volunteers uh, doing putting in so much effort, and I think that it's great. Uh, we get all the news in one platform, like I mentioned, and it's really it's really nice that they're putting so much effort into it. Okay, yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, it's also good for them, you know, to hear. Nice, uh, encouraging, and appreciative words from uh, players because they are doing it for the players. And as you yeah. rightly said, a bunch of volunteers, uh, close to 60 of them, spread across the globe. So they are doing a phenomenal uh, job. So you know, I mean, I say I'll take. Um, personally, I will, uh, you know, appreciate their effort and thank each one of them uh, today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I uh, couldn't and, agree uh, more. And yeah. Yeah, and uh, and talking about, I mean, thanking. Uh, I think uh, the current scenario and the situation we are in uh, let me use this platform to thank all the frontline workers the doctors uh, the nurses uh, the paramedics and the ambulance drivers and the ward boys and and uh, and everybody so let's uh, thank them for uh, helping uh, the humanity out so i thought we'll just express our thanks i mean we are doing yeah. very little compared to you know so many other uh, people for out there yeah i can agree more sir yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, uh, Sharmada. Uh, last lockdown, uh, you were uh, you know working in the corporate field, and this lockdown, you are a tennis player. So tell me, uh, what, what exactly is the the difference? Uh, 
you feel personally from last lockdown to this lockdown professionally <laughs> i think that um, last lockdown gave me a lot of time to introspect and just to figure out what i really want to do i think that um, yeah pretty much like you're locked in a house with your thoughts and you have no choice but to you know confront certain decisions and decide what you really want to do so i think that's basically what last lockdown was and i think it started much before i decided that i want to play so i started i actually started uh, getting back to working out and all of that in march end of february march and yeah as i was doing it and then i think a couple of months in i was just like uh, okay i want to play again <laughs> so i think that um that's the biggest difference and this year um yeah compared to where i was last year it's like a complete 180 <laughs> change so um in terms of uh, professionally it's um i feel like i'm back home um doing what i need to be doing and i'm the happiest um, on court so i i don't think there's any second guessing that anymore <laughs> Okay, so welcome back, Sharmada. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you. talking about uh, you know since you're back now and uh, you spent uh, four years uh, in corporate life, uh, how different you know for uh, for someone uh, who has experienced both because not many tennis players get to do that. So, you know, what is your uh, take on that? Like, and how different is corporate life uh, uh, compared to your uh, you know, tennis uh, playing uh, the tennis pro's life? Um. So to be completely honest I didn't decide to um choose the corporate life it just kind of happened and I just went like things were just appearing and I just went with the flow and I didn't know if I would uh, you know like it because it's not something that I've never done anything except play tennis and this is like a completely 9 to 5 job so I didn't know how I was going to you know um like that whole thing but uh, i actually had a really good time i'm not going to lie i didn't have uh, it was not how i expected it to be at all and i think that um the main thing was that i actually was working for one of a really good company that had a good uh, that treated their employees really well so and but there was apart from that i think that it taught me so much more in life compared to um like you know when you play a sport it teaches you something that nothing else can teach you and i think this also offers the same thing uh, it's a different side of life that i had never seen and i'd never known and i probably would not if i had not taken that path so i think that uh, i'm happy i'm grateful that i did that because it shows you the other side of reality as well that uh, that you probably really need in life and yeah so i think that uh, i am extremely happy with that experience i made a uh, uh, amazing friends there and i learned so much um not just in terms of like you know your career skills but also like your life skills and there's always something you can learn in whatever you do that's especially that's True. something that i truly believe so i think that it taught me so much and i'm really grateful for that okay uh, you enjoyed uh, corporate life uh, you know after moving from uh, the tennis uh, life so what made you come back well i think that um i i don't know i think that on the back of my mind i always knew that i'm going to come back it's just something that i did not um, what do you say um, deal with or accept in the beginning but i just knew that in the back of my mind it was always there that i'm not done with tennis yet but i think i just needed to um take a break some sort keep some sort of a distance just cuz it come a little too much maybe mentally and just with things um going on so i was just i think i needed that break but i i always knew that i was not done with tennis so i don't think that it it was just that that fire needed to come back and i think it just came back so so now you have the the same fire desire uh, you had when you were uh, playing earlier like uh, you know when you were the thick of things with tennis the same fire more think- less I think a little more to be honest cuz once you step away from it and you look at things from a different perspective you you're so grateful for like the smallest things like I remember um when I first came to RBT and I was playing I was so happy that I could still hit my forehand down the line like it could be nothing I could maybe rally five balls and if I'm like oh, it felt so nice and it, I was just grateful that I could move um right to the forehand side and back to the backhand side like just basic simple things gave me so much joy and i think that once you remove yourself from um 
the equation that you've been in for so long and look at it from a different perspective you just become really grateful for what you had and what you have especially if that's something that you want to pursue so i think that yeah i'm a lot more appreciative of the sport of um of competition of you know being ha- having the opportunity to play again so i think that um that gratitude is um is something that is very important and i think that yeah i that's why i'm a lot more fired up now than i was before a lot of people are happy uh, that you know you've come back uh, shravya just messaged that uh, you know you're such a motivator and you're uh, you're fired up and uh, you know and okay any anyway, shravya is now uh, you know since you're talking about shravya and your comeback uh, your comeback went really well like you know the first few tournaments you played you won doubles right so you're back in the indian uh, you know um, tennis scene uh, right away uh, so I also in the in the uh, you know as you as we talk about that our indian women's tennis has uh, and done extremely well you know they qualified uh, they were playing the playoff for the for the world group and uh, ankita had a close match with uh, ostapenko so where do you see uh, like you know when you come back after so many four years do you see the indian women's tennis in a in a better position in a great position what's your take on that um i think obviously it's it's a huge achievement that uh, you know that they've gone so far ahead and they're doing so well uh, ankita rutuja and everyone that played and i think that i mean after just seeing them after so long i was so happy like i said it's the basic things that made me so happy just like seeing all the players that i saw a couple of years back and i think that they've definitely um jumped jumped a lot higher than where it was before and yeah i think that uh, it's extremely motivating especially for me as well that i've come back after so long it's really nice to see them you know lift the flag high and do so well because it motivates me as well to you know get back um to that level uh i don't know if you remember but uh, you played uh, ostapenko right in italy uh, when you were like 14 years old or something so was yeah. he like you know did you know that or did you think that she was one hell of a player then or uh, what was your uh, yeah. remem- memory of that match um i remember that very well actually i played it was a 25k in italy and i played her first round of uh, the main draw if i'm not mistaken and i actually had a really um, close first set i lost 7-5 i had i was up a um, uh, break and but she was she was really like hitting big even back then and i think it was maybe i was 17 or 18 when i played her and she was uh, a junior coming off uh, the block and she was already ranked pretty high and the first game i think i lost like four points in a row and she just like blew me off the court cuz like her shots are really big and i was like okay sharma that it's like you know it's time to buck up you got to like you know step up your game so after that like the level just jumped drastically even from my side and i was sustaining with her but then i couldn't do that um for the next set so i was kind of blown off in the second set but yeah it was a great match and i think uh, I, if i'm not mistaken i think she made it to the finals or something that week and yeah everyone could see that you know she's going to be a great player oh given this message that you are a good uh, ludo player too so maybe uh, <laughs> not you beat if you play ostapenko now i mean you can challenge her for ludo <laughs> <laughs> we need to okay. get a yeah. it challenge back uh, the what we had in the lockdown last time okay so uh, okay now uh, coming back and in mean, vivo a few years uh, back you started uh, actually you started as uh, learning gymnastics right that was your first uh, you know sport and then you moved to uh, tennis and uh, your dad was a roller uh, skater so how come tennis i mean what led to tennis um so my dad was always into sports he was a roller skater and he used to play cricket as well and he was uh, really passionate and he was quite good uh, in what he was doing but he didn't have the opportunity to pursue it uh, like most people back then and he really wanted his children to be in the field of sports so i think it was already decided before i was born that i'm going to be some, like some sort of a sports player so um yeah where we were living there was like this huge uh, athletic ground and they had gymnastics which was taking off back then and i was 4 years old uh 4 or 5 years old and my dad put me into that and i was pretty good at it and 
I did like a um a performance for under 10 when I was like 6 or something like that. But then uh there was a really bad injury where uh, in the place that I was training one that one of the rings um broke and he fell down and he was hurt really bad. <laughs> and my dad was like really scared and he said he thought that there's no scope in uh, gymnastics in India just yet. So there was a tennis court right next to it um and he just put me there could just to see you know what it would be like and i think after that there was no looking back it's good i think uh, we are fortunate that you stuck to tennis and uh, uh, all your friends uh, who know you you know you know uh, are happy that you play tennis and we got to uh, know you <laughs> yeah i'm and, happy uh, that I mean, you got to know them too yeah sorry go ahead go ahead sir no i said i'm i'm really happy that i got to know them too <laughs> Yeah, uh, who who was your first coach? I mean, where did you start playing? Like, you know, the academy you started or the coach you started with? So I I started playing in this place called Mahila Seva Samaj. It's in uh, South Bangalore near Jayanagar. Um, and then I moved on. There's another academy right next to it called um, City Institute. So I was there like up until like under tens uh, until I was ill. Yeah, actually, the first uh, two one and a half years I was there. and then i moved to um, st johns in koramangala and i played with a coach called dian sir he was really nice i enjoyed playing there and then after that uh, when i was 9 i moved to um, my supati tennis academy okay and uh, like all tennis players in india the, the family support is uh, huge right i mean uh, and your brother plays uh, golf and uh, you're playing tennis so you know you want to uh, talk about the support your parents and your family uh, gave you i mean so a lot of people listening in for young kids and parents listening in i think uh, you know your words will be really really uh, useful for them i mean yes 100% there's absolutely no doubt about it you need the support of your parents um you can argue with them or disagree on certain decisions or whatever it may be but they are at the end of the day um the backbone of what you're going to be doing so i think that uh, yeah without my parents support and and like you know the the persistence of them to keep me going is uh, i think i'm really lucky that way because i have really understanding parents that you know they never forced me that you have to study you have to do this you have to pass this grade i mean i like studying but that's a different <laughs> situation completely but they never forced me into anything like that they just you know um gave me the freedom to pursue what i want to do and i don't think a lot of parents do that and i think that it's extremely important um for players who have parents like that um to appreciate it and be grateful because sometimes i think we tend to forget it because we are so caught up in just doing our own thing most of the time that we don't realize that you know hey this is the reality of things so i think uh yeah it's extremely important yeah very very valuable word for uh, players uh, you know who rely on your parents for uh, support and uh, okay talking about support uh, for any tennis player especially coming from india the financial side is a is a big one right i mean uh, you know you want to share some of the the challenges you and your family uh, face um yeah so once i started to turn when when i turned pro i think after i was like um actually even the last year of my junior years uh, i didn't have sponsors from then on up until then I, i i was you know lucky enough to be sponsored and taken care of uh, for the primary of my junior years and i'll always be grateful for it because it taught me so much and gave me so much experience that i could then later use it when i was turning pro and but ever since that happened it's basically been my parents that have been supporting me and of course it's extremely difficult and when you see i remember uh, when i used to play that um I used to see uh, my colleagues from India or even other countries. They used to play like maybe twenty, twenty-five weeks in a year, but I couldn't afford to do that. So I used to cut it down and maybe play ten to twelve weeks in a year. And yeah, so it it, it obviously makes a huge difference in terms of your ranking as well, because the more number of tournaments you play, the higher chances you have to you know increase your ranking or get better and like you know just to make the most of what you have. but uh, yeah without the support it uh, your chances decreases but uh, you just have to work extra hard uh talk i mean now there was a, like you know a word uh, going around that uh, because you didn't get financial support in karnataka you might shift to tamil nadu you want to clarify that 
Uh, I mean, Canada is full of so rumors and a lot of stories come out. So I think uh, you should uh, you know, put the. No, I out. think yeah, I think this was a long, long time back when I just turned pro. Probably one of my first interviews. But yeah, just to touch base on that, I don't think it was ever discussed by either me or my parents. We never discussed that. I think it was, uh, you know, just a misunderstanding and probably misquoted. And yeah, that shouldn't have been the headline for the article for sure. Okay, uh, talking about sponsorship. I mean, India. Not many uh, players get sponsorship, and uh, you know we have uh, and, and Go Sports in in Bangalore, and uh, you had uh, you no know, support for one year from them. So, what is your take on uh, the sponsorship, or uh, like you know coming with your cop with your experience and uh, having worked in the corporate field? How do you think we can uh, you know have more sponsorship for uh, juniors in the country for tennis players, the junior tennis players? Um. Yeah. Like you said, firstly. Uh, I was uh, I, Go Sports helped me the first year that they started. They were still um, big, uh, you know, starting out, and I was really lucky that they decided to support me the first year. So I, I mean, no matter what the support, we are always going to be grateful for it. If you know, monetary is nice, but even otherwise, I think every athlete can, you know, say that it really helps whatever kind of support it is. And I think that uh, in terms of sponsorship, unfortunately. um i feel this is my personal experience i feel that um everyone wants to support you when you're already big they don't want to support you when you know you're um trying to get there so i think i mean it makes sense um, now that i've seen the other side of the thing yeah you want to associate with something that can you know even help you market yourself now that i've you know seen the other side of the corporate world as well but i think that it's it's when you when you're not yet there is when you need it the most when you already make it big you don't really i mean yes it helps to have it but you don't really need it as much as when you're trying to make it big so i think that just a little bit of shift in that perspective when someone is looking to sponsor someone would go a long way cuz you never know who you're going to help yeah and uh, in your effort to uh, attract uh, sponsors or like you know like in india to get a sponsor you have to be lucky so in your effort to go there uh, you tried the uh, numerology as well right you changed your name and the people have asked me okay what exactly is your name now so <laughs> you want to oh. explain the the process of uh, you know playing around with your name actually it's a little embarrassing but yeah so when i was looking for sponsorships um someone approached me and they said that they really want to help me and you know they want me to <laughs> i can't say this with a straight face but yeah i mean so we took a meeting and um my parents were there as well and then they said that you know we'll really help you we'll give you you know so and so amount of money but there's one thing that i really need and it's something that i truly believe and then i was like okay and then he's like you got to you know do this numerology thing and i was like completely against it cuz it's my name <laughs> like it's not something um that you can just do like this so i was completely against it but my parents were like you know think about it like it's just like a couple of letters maybe we didn't even know what was going to be added or removed or whatever that was and i was just like i was so against it but i'm like maybe if you know if he's helping it might be worth it who knows it might even be um good it might even be good uh, for uh, you you never know cuz i was i keep an open mind so i'm not i don't know if that helps or not but Yeah so that's one of the reasons why we changed it but obviously I didn't get the money <laughs> I mean so, I can tell you one thing I mean you, whether you got whether you didn't get money but you got a lot of letters added to your name so you gained something out of it <laughs> so you cannot say that you didn't gain so you lot of a's and lot of r's and uh, <laughs> sort of things were thrown around in your name no people really didn't know what your name felt anymore yeah i think it it was i was the butt of every joke for a really long time and i think i deserved it on some level cuz i would have done the same thing to someone else <laughs> i mean it is funny at the end of the day but i'm just glad um for it to be back to normal now i feel i feel like my my own name is like you know your identity is with that thing so like i'm just really happy that i don't have so many extra letters anymore <laughs> Okay, that's good. You're back to your uh, original identity now, right? <laughs> Shravya found it funny. So, so did Saujanya. So the people who know you know this joke because I'm sure they were uh, they had a good time all these years. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, Samadha, now moving on to slightly, uh, you know, the serious uh, part of it, I mean, you know, your junior days, you had a really good run, right? I mean, you started ITF juniors uh, very early, I think you were 13, 14, when you already, you know, tried. I remember once uh, you weren't uh, allowed to play tournaments because, uh, you know, you had crossed the number of tournaments for the prescribed uh, age. So, basically, you started uh, very early uh, as a junior. So, uh, you think that was, uh, looking back, you think that was uh, uh, beneficial or uh, you think you could have waited and uh, you know, a couple of years and then started on the ITF? Um, I mean, I think the smarter choice would have been to wait a couple, a little bit longer than to have started when I did. Because it did kind of hammer my confidence a little bit in the beginning because um, I was a little too young to be starting out then and I was just losing a lot and I didn't have a good, um, what do you say, I, I think I had a spell where I didn't win a tournament for like three years or something, three, three and a half years. So obviously it hammers your confidence quite a bit. And yeah, I think it would have been better if I started a little later. I mean, planning is, um, is extremely important. Uh, but I think now that um, if you look at it from the other side, I also got the kind of exposure and experience that no one else has gotten, probably. So I think I choose to look at it from um, the glass half full side instead of this. Because, yeah, I mean, I saw how I saw pretty early what the level of players were um, in Europe or wherever it was. And then saw how much of catching up I had to do because I didn't stand a chance like given my fitness or whatever it was. So like I, I knew that, you know, I caught it on early that, hey, I need to catch up. So I think, um, yeah, it's it's both, sir. Yeah, but but uh, I mean, uh, credit to you because you said you like, you know, three years, you had a lot of losses and uh, you don't winning matches that he has hit uh, takes, uh, and the confidence takes a big hit when it happens. But uh, after that, I mean, from 2009, I mean, you had a, a great run for four years. I mean, 2009, you won the 16 and 18 nationals. In 2010, you won the 18 nationals. You won a round at Junior uh, Australian Open. And uh, in 2011, uh, you won your first uh, futures, uh, I mean, 25, I mean, 10K, you won uh, as a junior. So, you know, you did extremely well, considering that you said, you know, you had a huge confidence uh, hit before. And uh, uh, you want to talk us through the the phase where you no know, you did nine, 2009 to 2012 where you had a great run. Yeah. So I as I was mentioning, um, my confidence was pretty uh, low when I was still in juniors, and I think everything turned. I remember this extremely vividly is when I was playing the under 16 nationals in uh, Ramesh Desai in Mumbai. And I was playing um, Natasha, uh, a good friend of mine, Natasha, in the finals. And I was down. I was losing. I had I was down match point, and I saw that, you know, I was in the finals. And I'm like, you came all this way, and you you didn't come here to lose. Like, you know, I don't know. Something just clicked, and I recovered from that set, and I won in the third set, and yeah, and it was just like that. That I think that point was a turning point for me because, like, from not winning anything to directly winning the nationals, it's like it confirmed something that I always knew that you know, hey, you belong here. You're you're good. You can do this. So I think that uh, that match actually changed a lot. Kind of turned around my confidence. And after that, I just played. I just played freely without a lot of um, things like in my head. I there was a lot of pressure obviously, like everyone has, but I just decided to, you know, just play freely. And once I, I knew that I had to turn pro because juniors was not going well at all. And I'm like, and especially for anyone that turns pro from juniors, um, <laughs> Vishnu says, Balu yeah. speaking to Balu. Yeah, right. Like, come to the mirror now. <laughs> but, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was just like, I decided to turn pro and I had, zero expectations because I was not winning anything in juniors. I just won one. Um, I just, I mean, yeah, I won the nationals. But apart from that, it was, I didn't have a long um, uh, streak of trophies. So I just went in and I was like, uh, zero expectations. Let's go. Let's play. And I was extremely fired up and I was hungry to, you know, win and and make a mark in that. So I think I just 
I just played without any expectations, and it was really amazing. Like I remember every single every single tournament so clearly, and it yeah, it just felt really nice. And I, and in Lucknow when I played, I played some of my best tennis uh, of my life there. It was really, it just kind of was falling into place. So I think that it was just not thinking about too many things and just playing. Like what we're supposed to do is what um, helped me. So for young players listening in, these are valuable words. I mean, you know how you keep working hard. You might have losses, but you put your mind in and uh, work towards it. Everything changes uh, for the better. And uh, you talk. You just spoke about the Lucknow. Uh, you know the 10K you won. And Ankita told me uh, that uh, apparently when you won it, it was such an inspiration for all the girls. I mean, uh, I mean, I think it's really nice of her. I mean, the current uh, India number one you know, looked up to you. Uh, Few years ago, so I, I'm, I'm sure that's motivating you uh, to come back and uh, yeah, catch up with Ankita. I mean, yeah, look at it; it's like a full circle now. I mean, I feel extremely. It's super nice of her to say that, and I'm really grateful that you know she feels that way. And I think, yeah, I think it was quite a um, important day, if I'm not mistaken, because no one had won it in a really long time, and I just I didn't even think about like. Winning that tournament, like that was not even close to my thought process. I just wanted to go and play, and I just took it match by match. And I know I first round I really struggled in my first round. I somehow pulled it out in the third set, and after that, like you know, just things started falling into place. And I was just doing what I was trained to do, and I was just you know playing and sticking to um, the tactics or the strategy that I. um was doing the entire week so and it worked and i think that by each match like my confidence grew and there was just zero doubt in my head and it was not even about winning it was like zero doubt about me not knowing um you know um what i have to do or not the uh, you know so since vishnu is uh, you know come uh, come on i will uh, i like to share what uh, vijay told me You and Vijay played uh, mixed doubles against uh, Vishnu and uh, and Sonia once, and uh, apparently your first service game, uh, Vijay was uh, giving you a lot of uh, tactical advice on uh, serving to Vishnu, and uh, you served two second serve aces against Vishnu, and Vijay said after that he didn't open his mouth. So, I mean, I don't know if Vishnu remembers it, but uh, Vijay remembers it with uh, you know a lot of pleasure now. And uh, anyway, no. uh, so. Yeah, boy. You remember that double match? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember, sir. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I completely remember this. Um, I first of all, I love playing doubles, and I love playing mixed doubles. It's so much fun, and it's just like I feel like we need a lot more of those uh, in the country for sure. I'm rooting for it, but uh, yeah, I think that um, I remember this very well. I, it's like zero pressure, and I'm someone that. I want to do something really well. That competitive thing is always there in me, and it's it was there even when I was, you know, working in the corporate uh, this thing. I don't think that's something that's ever going to go away. So yeah, I I really wanted to like you know win and like uh, hit an ace or whatever you call it. So yeah, I just saw the spots or the angles, and I just went for it. Like I didn't even think about it twice. Vishnu conveniently doesn't want to remember that, but. Uh... Uh, Jeevan remembers your uh, mixed doubles exploits in uh, Pune Tennis uh, League. <laughs> yeah, I am just feeling that now, but yeah, yeah so actually I, I, that I was. Mean, yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah, no, I said that. Um, yeah, even the league matches, they were like it was amazing fun, and I truly enjoyed all of my mixed doubles matches. I think I had an amazing record also in that the win loss record. So I think that um, I loved playing them. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, since uh, Vishnu is here, I mean, uh, there's something. Uh, 2012, uh, like you know, you were uh, in the Fed Cup team, and uh, you were also probable for the the Olympics. I mean, you had a there was a talk that you could be playing doubles with uh, with Sanya. I mean, I connected with Vishnu because uh, Vishnu played that Olympics, so that's it. Right. So anyway, uh, coming back to you, so there's a lot of talk about it, and I'm sure you know you also had uh, hopes, and you know you really looked forward to it. and uh, it didn't happen okay for whatever reason it didn't happen and uh, you didn't go so like you know i'm i'm sure it was disappointing so how did you handle that because there was a lot of you no know, it looked like you were the one uh, you know looking to play doubles with sanya and then it didn't happen and it was olympics i mean everything was big 
and uh, you are having a great run and uh, you know you four years you have been everything has gone in your favor uh, and suddenly there was a setback like this so how did you, you know, look at it how did you handle it um it was obviously extremely disappointing i think that was it was also one of the most painful injuries i've ever gone through in my life my ankle was literally hanging by like a i don't know like a fiber or whatever but it was yeah it was after my match and i was in the gym and i was just doing a couple of rehab exercises and i just fell off a bosu ball and it completely tore and i remember my father was um going somewhere and i called him and he was extremely bad and we had to go to the um basically he said that um, your ankle is destroyed <laughs> and you need to get a surgery um sooner or later and you and it's going to be a really long time if at all you can play again and he didn't say that to me he said it to my father because he didn't want me to hear it but obviously i heard it because <laughs> you know we we want to know everything so i kind of heard it and i was in a wheelchair i was in a wheelchair for like 3 months so um it was it was super disappointing and yeah it took a huge toll on me because you know you're so close to what you are working all your life and then it suddenly got there i was going to be selected or not that's a different thing but like you know just having it so close and yet you didn't make it so it took a toll on me and i i moped about it for a while and um yeah there were talks about me getting the surgery but i'm petrified of hospital and needles and everything to do with that so i decided that I'm not going to get the surgery and I kind of just made up my mind that I'm going to be fine. <laughs> like I don't know how that works but I'm telling you that really works. Um so I'm just like I just decided that you know what you're just going to be fine keep working on things whatever you can and I was in a cast for like 3 months and by the time they removed it my ankle was like the size of my wrist or even smaller. So there was a lot of imbalance and uh yeah and after like 10 months I was back on court. so i couldn't uh like it was surprising to my parents that you know i made it back so fast but yeah i i i just like i couldn't be out for so long like it was just not acceptable to me but going back on it i probably should have waited a little longer uh, and made like a complete uh, recovery and gotten stronger because i think that also led to a couple more injuries later on but yeah i think i think that was my first and the biggest injury i've ever had in my life um so yeah i think that's that's how that happened uh you mentioned that when uh, the doctor was uh, you no know, talking and then you overheard and you want to know everything i mean bala says the same apparently you're very inquisitive and you keep troubling people till you get to know so i told him the best is not to tell you and i said you keep troubling like you know please tell please tell please tell so what is it that do makes you so inquisitive no i think i just You I love gossip, just... or you just said you love gossip, or uh... <laughs> no? I don't like. Gossip. Come on, I mean, actually, I think everyone loves gossip. You would be lying if you said you didn't. But it's not just about that. It's just like, like when, why, like especially with Bala, if he's saying something to someone and he's they're sitting right next to you, obviously you would want to know. Like who wouldn't want to know? <laughs> you would want to know. <laughs> and. and Okay and now uh, moving on i mean uh, you you mentioned the uh, ankle injury what is it that with your ankle your friends say that even when you walk on a, a normal flat clean floor you know rishika said uh, you know it cost her a birthday celebration because you tripped yeah. that morning and yeah. uh, you hurt your ankle and apparently a match uh, you and saujanya were to go on court you know before the match you just went to the restroom and you twisted your ankle so What is the yeah. the the secret behind uh, this ankle injury? And uh, are you injury prone, or uh, it's just that the ankle is the weakest link? I think I think the ankle was the weakest link. I'm working really hard to make sure it's not anymore. But I think that uh, yeah, especially when it comes to Rishika's birthday, it was the same uh, time as the 2020 uh, 2012 uh, Olympics. that was the same thing that happened and i was so bummed because we had made this entire plan that we would go and watch the movies and all of this and i had to call her and be like hey i can't get off from the wheelchair so yeah it was it was uh, yeah even i won't forget that day either but i think that uh, yeah this is absolutely true i don't know why when i'm just walking and i'll be in flats and then just go like this and then come back but if i'm wearing heels it never happens i don't know why maybe i'm just like you know not focused when i'm walking <laughs> so, so on the on a court you haven't twisted your ankle you always twisted your ankle off court is it i mean 
No, I think on court I have, but not as often. Maybe in like ten times, maybe two times on court. But most of my ankle things happen off court. I don't know why. For uh, juniors uh, listening in, I mean, a word of uh, uh, advice: how they can uh, handle injuries and uh, how they can come out of injuries. Um. Yeah, I would say that it's uh, it's difficult, no doubt. Especially um, depends on the injury, depends on the timing of the injury and the circumstances. Like everything combined together, it's every injury will have a different uh, effect on you. So I would say that um, yeah, it sucks. But at the end of the day, if you want to, you know, succeed, you've got to find a way to um, get through it. So I think that just uh, just you have to be persistent. It's it's extremely tiring and draining physically and mentally like even now i've been doing like so many rehab exercises for the last couple of weeks it's the same thing it's the same repetitions it can get really monotonous and you feel like skipping some of them but you can't do that you have to you have to stick to um everything that you can do to make it better there's no shortcuts you have to be patient and you have to yeah you'll have bad days but you have to figure out a way you know that it's just going to last one day and then you've got to pick it up again tomorrow but uh, and shivika says uh, apparently on the dance floor you never twist your ankle so that you said earlier right when you wear heels you said you don't twist so uh, shivika you got your answer uh, right there <laughs> but but lot of your friends have given uh, enough uh, solutions i mean nakar said that's because you're thinking of writing poetry so that's why you would have twisted your ankle As Saujanya said, uh, "You're thinking of uh, butter chicken." So, a lot of people have. You know, Rishika says fries. So, okay. <laughs> so, all your favorite dishes are right. Uh, I mean, put out right there for everyone. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, moving on to slightly uh, serious uh, topic. You trained in multiple academies, right? I mean, I think you were in uh, Spain, uh, in Barcelona, and then you were in, uh, in Germany. uh you were in bangkok also for a short while yeah i was training i trained yeah. with paul so, dane for a yeah so how how did you like you know each academy okay they have their own approach a different approach and uh, like you know you they advise uh, like you know you have different inputs coming in so how did you manage those you know changes and it was happening quite uh, rapidly also it's not like you know you are in one academy for a considerable duration of time So, how did you handle it, and uh, what's your experience? Um, I think that yeah, I think it was happening uh, very rapidly. Like you mentioned, I wasn't in one place for a very long time, and maybe that was not the best thing. But uh, I mean, I think, like I said, there's always something to take from any place or anything that you do, and I enjoyed all of my. Um, uh, everywhere that i went i had a good time like i enjoyed and i learned a lot of things like it's different perspectives from everyone and you just you pick what is useful to you that's something that i realized and i think that i realized that everyone will say a lot of things to you um but at the end of the day if you don't understand it or if you don't believe in it it's pointless so i think that it um yeah it just it taught me that you know it taught me to pick and choose of what i can learn from everyone uh that's one thing but also i feel that uh now when i look back on it i feel that it doesn't matter where you train it really doesn't matter uh, which place you train in india or abroad or wherever it may be as long as you know what you're doing you know why you're doing it and if you have a good team that is supporting you to do it um that's all you really need and uh, there's a question coming now uh, from d krishna Uh, is ankle support recommended for young tennis players? Uh, you want to speak on that, Sharmila? Having had a lot of experience um, with ankle injuries. Yeah, I would say that this is my experience. Um, for I am not a professional in in this uh, topic, but I mean, I would say that yeah, I needed ankle support on uh, certain times. But I would also say that it's better to not get used to it because then your ankle doesn't get stronger. you become too dependent on it which is what happened to me when i was playing i became extremely dependent on it and if i couldn't find like one of my ankle supports like i would go crazy i'm like where is it i can't play my match without it so um yeah if your ankles are in extremely bad shape and until you can get them stronger yeah i would definitely say maybe wear it but also you need to get um, you know the physio's recommendation for it 
but I would say it while you're wearing it, you should also work to make it stronger so that you don't need it, so that you don't depend on it. That's the end goal. Okay. Uh, going back to earlier, uh, you said you know we're playing in different academies, so that means you know you're going to be alone and you're going to be you know in, uh, uh, based in different uh, 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 locations. So being independent when you're rank, uh, and then like you know uh, you know the, you know it's, it's a open world out there in the tennis field. So a lot of influences, uh, the good and the bad, that uh, come in. So. Uh, for the, the juniors and uh, the parents uh, listening in who have, want an idea of uh, what it is to be out there when you are alone uh, you want to talk about it like you, you are you know you there's nobody to you know safeguard you or protect you you have to protect yourself and uh, you know there will be many influences and uh, especially when you are a junior you have uh, you know the you know, the boys and girls are there so you have your likes and you know you like somebody so you can get into relationships uh, which can be harmful to your tennis uh, you know you can have bad influences coming which can you know cause uh, disruption to your training so you want to you know share your experience and also a word of uh, advice for uh, people listening in yeah so my first travel ever was when i was 12 years old i traveled by myself to indonesia it was my first time uh, flying and even internationally so i was really excited but at the same time i was petrified um i think that yeah my journey began a lot earlier than what other people would have probably so i think that um, i had to kind of um, grow up and keep my eyes open <laughs> a lot earlier than a lot of people so that was a little scary but at the same time gave me a little bit of edge on how to you know look out for things i guess i just got used to it cuz like i said if there's no one with you you're solely dependent on yourself and you have to look out for yourself so i kind of became good at spotting the good and the bad and i would just avoid it and i mean like you mentioned bad influences good influences relationships whatever they are i think it's inevitable uh, it is going to happen um i know as parents it can be scary i know my parents were really scared when i used to go as well and they used to you know constantly check in about what's happening and yeah we may find it annoying when we are younger but now when you grow older you realize where they're coming from but at the same time i think that um for parents all that they can do is you know um the more you say don't do this or don't do that especially in today's generation they're going to do that just that like you know it's like i said it's inevitable all of these things are going to happen you cannot control them but i think if you provide them with the tools of how to deal with it when it happens that's the most important thing because if um you keep saying that don't do this or this should not happen and when it happens if the player or the child doesn't know how to deal with it that's going to be a problem like you know so i would say that just be there for them and teach them how to deal with situations if that happens and coming from a player's perspective i think that uh, yeah you just have to be extra alert unfortunately if you when you're traveling uh, by yourself and you just have to as long as you know why you are where you are and the your priorities like if you know what you've come there to do um as long as you have your priorities right i think that uh, you're going to be fine you should you just need to know i mean it's not a bad thing to you know uh meet other people or get into relationships be it good or whatever it is but as long as you know the difference from the good and the bad and what can actually help you and what can actually harm you um and choose the correct one i think you'll be okay okay uh i just taking a question uh, it's pretty long question so let me read it what's your favorite surface what advice do you have for junior tennis player who plays an aggressive game rather than being a lot of success in clay court tournament uh you want to quickly uh, mention uh, answer that uh, sharmila yeah What's so my favorite, favorite yeah my favorite an aggressive surface player, is player yeah sorry you, you got the question right yeah i'm reading it here right. too yeah. um i would say my favorite question uh, my favorite uh, surface is hard court for sure no doubt i also like grass um i played some really good matches on that but not enough um yeah and advice for an aggressive game but hasn't seen a lot of success in clay court it's probably because it's similar to me i would say my game style because i i feel like i'm i hit pretty big from the baseline and uh, i've done a lot well on hard court compared to clay court it's probably because 
you're not used to staying in the point as long as you can on hard code like clay code you have to the point goes on much longer and it takes it to and it's also like you know it's a lot more effort and your body also has to be a lot more stronger to deal with it in hard codes you can keep the point shorter and you know you can you can take charge of the point basically especially if you have big weapons and in clay code it slows that down and it gives your opponent to kind of counter that hence you're going to play that extra ball which is going to you know give the opportunity for you to either make the same aggressive stroke again or maybe miss so i think um, that's why you probably are not doing as well on clay code so if you want to improve that then definitely you need to um work on being more patient and also getting physically stronger with the legs because you're going to be running a lot more okay since you said you you have a very aggressive style and uh, you know the the your record says you won 15 uh, itf uh, t- titles in doubles and out of that 10 of them are uh, indian partners i mean you have druti prarthana rishika and uh, and uh, and saujanya so did you ever think that uh, maybe uh, like you know you can focus more on doubles and uh, you know move away from singles did that thought occur to you at uh, any point of time um i think towards the end it did but also i didn't take it as seriously towards the end because i i wanted to give singles a shot too because i started doing well in that first right so it was a little bit hard to let go of it but then obviously when you see the numbers on paper it shows what you're actually good at and what you need to work on so i think that towards the end i thought about it but that's um still something that i'm still thinking about so yeah and uh, your friends say that uh, you know you're full of energy and you're cracking jokes and like you know you you're full of life uh does that uh, help when you play doubles does that help you and uh, the team as such so the, yeah the, the, 100% the... i think so i i mean at least from my side i think so because i feel like doubles is a lot more energy yeah tactics and coordination all of that helps but it's also like you know that energy that you have um the confidence and all of that i thrive on that and i'm pretty sure like you know other people too so like if you have a good energy between your partner and especially at like crucial points that like the important points where you know you need to um go get it and not like give um not like where you, like important points when you need to step up rather um i think energy plays a huge role in it and regardless of how you've uh, done the previous points or the previous game or even if you miss like the easiest volley it doesn't matter like that point is over you need to focus on the next so yeah if i feel like you know my partner is like um a little bit down or like doubting i just like erase that thought completely i'm like hey, come on let's do this anyway you have abundance of it so you can easily share it with them so <laughs> they will take it but uh, one of your partner said that only when you get little tight then uh, like you want to talk and then you start tying two legs uh, three four times so so your energy kind of uh, goes in tying two legs i believe <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually that i don't know how that even happened and at one point it got so bad i remember tying it so many times and my feet would hurt because i tied it so tight but i just couldn't stop doing it and i think it just became like a um, coping mechanism of some level that it just uh, i just used to like tie my shoelaces like if if i needed time or whatever it was not necessarily because i was nervous but just cuz you know i wanted to think something or just like focus or like instead of going to the towel i used to do that but i worked on it after a lot of people have told me <laughs> and um, yeah it's, it still happens sometimes but it's not <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's not like I don't do it anymore. I still do it, but uh, not as often. And yeah, it's much better now. Yeah, talking about your friends, another uh, like you know area where uh, they were all uh, you know concerned when you are around is uh, during uh, the meal time. You know they say that they better get their food in because if Sharmada goes, you no, know, you know we are running out of food that day. So what is it that uh, you know <laughs> you know you have such a huge uh, appetite? We'll talk about the diet after this, but please talk about <laughs> happy diet first. I knew this was coming. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know. So I've always been like a huge foodie since I was young, as far as I can remember. I would never say no to food. Like anything you gave me, I would eat. And even if my friends couldn't eat, I need to eat their food. Um, yeah, I just I never really said no to any sort of food. <laughs> and then it's just like uh 
Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. People are talking about your laugh also. Anyway, that's, that's the energy, guys. I mean, come on. You know, she's full of energy. She's like, you know, so it comes out through laugh. Even Akash has a really interesting laugh. So, but funny even Akash mentioned about your laugh. Huh? So, anyway, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, let's, let's come to your diet. So, what made you a vegan? <laughs> Okay so um I stopped eating meat uh once I stopped playing tennis like on a serious note I just uh, stopped uh, it just in my house we never really cooked that much um I always used to eat out because my parents don't eat um so yeah it just cut down drastically and one day I was going to work and I saw like this truck full of uh, chicken in front of me and i was just like nope i can't do this anymore and i just like i stopped i turned vegetarian that day i think for a long time but i used to have like a little bit of meat here and there when i went out maybe once in a couple of months um yeah and then i started like when the lockdown happened i had so much time and i started uh, reading about things and just like you know once i started working out as well i I just don't know I just like researching and reading a lot of things and it wasn't feeling right to me and I just like saw this um, you know things about veganism and how that helps the environment and how you know it's actually beneficial for your body and yada yada, yada. but I wasn't really I I wasn't really 100% sure on um if this would work so I just wanted to try it for myself and obviously it helped that you know I didn't have to kill animals So um yeah I just decided to try it and and I stuck to it and it wasn't at all for someone that loves food so much I'd never thought that I could do this. So um I think you're getting uh yeah, yeah, message no, so Yeah I don't know about it yeah okay got it yeah, yeah so for someone that uh, you know loves food so much I never thought I could do this like you know that means cutting out so much of uh, things that you eat on a daily basis but i thought that you know let's try it if i mean you're in lockdown what's going to happen so i just uh, stuck to that and i did it and it, i think it's working for me like it felt really good um like i i could feel a change and i was i put on a lot of weight uh, when i stopped playing and i could see it slowly shedding without working out as much cuz you know basically you stop eating like a lot of junk food when you turn uh, vegan as well it cuts out a lot of uh, processed food and all of it and i think i did it at the correct time and it wasn't like uh, that i had to do it or whatever it's just something that i related to and it spoke to me and and yeah that's why and i i decided to stick to it i didn't know how it was going to be but it makes me feel better so yeah Yeah, that's good. Whatever works for you is uh, is the best. And uh, you mentioned that you no, know, somebody some a foodie like you. And uh, Ankita has an interesting uh, story. She said uh, you're playing Nike Masters, and apparently you're walking around with this uh, cup noodles in hand. And then, like you know, you walked around as if you no, know, you made it very clear that you're not going to share one spoon with anyone, and nobody even asked. And she said it was uh, like you know, everybody was like you know, oh okay, you know, better stay off. You remember that incident, or you done it too often that you don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I kind of remember, but not really. But it's totally believable because I didn't like sharing my food at all. Like it took me a lot of time, a lot of maturity, and a lot of willpower to actually share my food. Like I'm not. I it was just something that I could not do. Like I, it would be like, okay, I have my bowl of plate of rice. If you want, you get one more. You eat that. and like you know if you can't finish it i leave the other half also like there's no problem and like it's all good but don't touch my food that's how you're i was to, you're willing to share their food not your food okay got it <laughs> but i'm yeah. not like that anymore like okay. update yeah that's, yeah that's good there's a question coming in uh, is it advisable for a junior tennis player to quit eating meat is it possible to get enough protein in a in a vegan diet so you want to uh, you can speak about that uh, samadha for sure yeah i think that um yeah i think that it's absolutely possible look at the end of the day it's protein you need um whether it comes from animal or whether it comes from something else it's still protein so i think that if you reach your um targeted protein goals you're going to be fine so 
it's yeah everyone i feel like everyone's so worried like the moment you turn vegan about like your protein intake like but to be honest before that i was not eating as as much protein as i am eating now like if i'm going to be completely honest cuz i didn't track anything I, and i never eat meat on a daily basis so i think that um it's it's your choice about how you want to approach it again at the end of the day it's protein that you've got to eat um and it's your choice as to where it's going to come from and uh, yeah everybody knows you as a, a tennis player and uh, very few know your creative side of you i mean you are very good with uh, like you know like sketching and uh, you know um drawing and uh, you know painting and things like that uh, so how did i remember uh, when you long time ago you did a caricature and it was so nice uh but uh, but 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 you you waited for a while before you started uh, pursuing that uh, seriously right so as a kid uh, though you had it i don't uh, think you, you know spent enough time uh developing it what do you look back um, for i think that to be honest i even since i was young maybe 6 or 7 i was always into um arts and creative things and painting and um everything and it was just yeah i think that uh, i was not given an opportunity to pursue that to be honest so it kind of like took a back seat because i was playing tennis and so it just dipped like i stopped doing it uh, completely and i slowly started uh, doing it once i got a little older i think it somewhat became like my coping mechanism to a lot of things like it, if i was bored or stressed or happy or any sort of emotion it just came out that's how it started coming back and yeah i used to do a lot of it and i remember in uh, chandigarh i did the caricature and yeah i used to i keep doing a bunch of things i don't stick to one thing like it's i like trying uh, different uh, you know lanes in the creativity sector so yeah i think that's how it started but i i, I stuck to it after that and uh, how, how I mean, uh, when did you get into the poetry part because uh, i mean you write really good uh, ones i mean bala bala is listening in bala can appreciate it to the the last detail uh, even akash bog was uh, very impressed by your uh, <laughs> the the, uh, the poetry <laughs> writing skills so you i mean you want to talk about how did you get into that and uh, um so again even writing i've always written like even since i was i think maybe 9 or 10 i started writing poems like like basic baby poems <laughs> but i used to write a lot i used to write like letters or poems or whatever and i used to have like journals uh, about that but i never shared it with anyone i never told anyone that i was doing this i just i was just doing it and it used to be with me and uh, yeah i think that uh, once i started working um, in the corporate sector i showed it to a couple of my friends um and i'm like hey what do you think of this i didn't like yeah and actually my brother was the first person i showed it to um and i just i told him that uh, you know hey rushant i found uh, these things uh, uh, online i didn't tell him i wrote it what do you think of it and he was like super impressed and he's like this is really good and and stuff like that and then like half an hour later i told him that hey <laughs> i wrote it and he just he couldn't believe it so that kind of like gave me a little um, confidence on like okay maybe i have something going here and then i shared it with my friends at work and they were like super super supportive i can't thank them enough and we used to have like i used to just while working i used to come up with things and i used to be like guys what do you think of this and we used to huddle up and i used to tell them like it was actually really cute and i really missed that and they they were like super supportive and they're like do you need to share this with the world this is good and like you know um so that kind of support and motivation kind of pushed me to like start publishing it i was really skeptical because i didn't know how it was going to be um you know uh, accepted because <laughs> <laughs> i But like really, my, there are my... uh, not enough balas in the world <laughs> bala and balu i mean i must admit <laughs> akash claims he understood everything but okay we'll believe him <laughs> oh my god yeah okay and uh, moving on uh, uh, like you know from your creative side these uh, the, the insta reels uh, you do is that uh, part of uh, the creative uh, <laughs> you know exploring the new layer of creativity in you and you had to and you have shivani also to support you oh my god look shravya what have you gotten me into but yeah no so i think it just uh, it was 
so many like because of the lockdown uh, last year like, all of this trend started right i was never really into it obviously i thought it's really funny but i never saw myself doing it and i think that it just happened out of the blue like it was like a it was like such a like one of those blood blood days and it was just so gloomy and we were just like uh, you know <laughs> so i'm very good at dropping catches <laughs> but no it was just one of those days where it was so blah and it was just like not feeling really like you know the energy was not so good and we were just very man like come let's do this like you know let's try this let's see how it goes and we lit- the first reel we literally did it in like 10 minutes and we just did like a bunch of stuff and it was so funny like we were doing it we were laughing like it just like lifted up our moods i think we just did it for ourselves more than other people to be honest and never thought of share, uh, sharing it <laughs> but to a few friends and they're like this is hilarious like you know put this up and it just went viral after that <laughs> again part of your uh, you know the energy in you coming out in another uh, form <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i mean uh, shivani mentioned that you, you know uh, drop catches but uh, doesn't she know that you're good at drive only <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't seen that yet yeah again uh, like you know that is the inquisitiveness in you like you know how do i do it how do i do it how do i do it do it again do it again so yeah but uh, it's a very good uh, quality i must say because that uh, you know, till you got it you know you kept uh, you kept at it and you didn't let people also rest till you got it so <laughs> so maybe one day yeah. you show her your uh, drive only and uh, <laughs> erase this uh, drop catches from her mind yeah. and then yeah, uh, yeah from, uh, you said you do a lot of uh, you're learning music now right i mean you're learning keyboard and uh, you know you're reading as well right like you know so yeah. when we talk like look like look at your uh, like you know you have your tenors your training you know your your poetry uh, writing and then uh, you have the the painting part and then you have the the insta uh, reel happening in the midst of all this where do you get time to attend all the weddings possible <laughs> well we haven't had one in a really long time to be honest that's so that's how i have like yeah. yeah but uh, uh <laughs> i think i made up for all the uh, weddings i missed while growing up in that one year stretch and it was so nice like honestly from the bottom of my heart i love weddings <laughs> like i really and, uh, enjoy them and i uh, even uh, said you should be a wedding mascot <laughs> so you don't have a title now i mean you reached that level now legend status yeah, go on go on <laughs> talk about your wedding experience yeah <laughs> my wedding experience is oh my god so many to tell but like no like honestly like i really enjoyed them so like i think it's especially for me at that point cuz i had not uh, i was not playing with ornament right so i was not seeing my friends so for me it was even that uh, <laughs> I mean so many comments are coming up uh, but yeah I mean I think that it was just one place where I could meet all my friends again so I think that was like one of the most important things and obviously celebrating the couple that is getting married but at the same time it's so much fun and it's like such good vibes and you know it's like there's so much to like um I yeah know. to it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jeevan wants to know your uh, the, the the really enjoyable car ride you had uh, from uh, Coimbatore uh, with Akash after Bala's wedding. Everybody wants to know about that car ride. Uh, I'm bringing Akash oh, in actually to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you should ask Akash, poor fellow. But uh, yeah, I think that we had to. <laughs> it was uh, Bala's wedding was super fun again, and we had to go back to Bangalore. And <laughs> sometimes I forget who said. <laughs> Yeah I think this is what happens when you attend so many weddings but yeah I think I mean the car kind of broke down on the way and we were super tired and we not slept for a couple of days and it was just it was just a, it was a really funny story but I think it's better to hear it from Akash early yeah, you know, morning that was the uh, next morning was nice but that evening was not nice. Akash Akash always knows the, the shortest route between Bangalore and uh, and Kaimbatur i mean he finds uh, happy bands and uh, you no know, he goes in with true animals and uh, you know, he has a lot of uh, you know, navigation many people have discovered so far so, uh, okay okay uh, moving on to uh, uh, like you know your, your future so now what's your future plan like you know what do you uh, 
what what's your immediate uh, goals and uh, long term long term uh, goals um I mean, I now there won't be any wedding for a while, so I guess that is not part of your plan. So. Sir, no, sir, there is one wedding. Okay. Don't don't beat the drum so early, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because a lot of places they allow only fifty people, so you will manage to fit in that. Yeah, yeah, it's a tight okay. circle. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so I hope that if hmm. things, if if uh, obviously if things get better. um yeah i'll be going but otherwise we'll see but i think uh, to answer your question about my immediate goals i think that um yeah i just played two of the itf events and the second one i couldn't really compete cuz uh, i was not in the best shape but i'm excited to uh, play the itfs once again obviously the first immediate goal is to get my ranking uh, going and then yeah i think at the end of the day it's always the same to just go and give my best and try to win um you know the match and see where that leads to but yeah i'm definitely focusing on playing both singles and doubles um i've not like ruled out singles or just focusing on doubles yet um but yeah i'm keeping an open mind to see how this goes first and then take a decision uh, post that looking back uh, what would uh, sharma the 16 would have done different with the, the same spelling same spelling same spelling yeah. sharmada um, should have believed What? in herself a little more okay so well, one advice to uh, the juniors because you are a fantastic uh, junior run so at that point of time to like you know and after that things didn't go as well as the the climb that 2009 to uh, 2012 those four years were fantastic run okay you got injured you lost the momentum but uh, to juniors uh, aspiring juniors who are having a lot of success uh, at the junior level uh, what would you uh, uh, have for them um i would say first juniors and pro is completely different it's two different ball games so don't go with uh, any expectations even if you are doing really well in juniors uh, and even if you don't do well in juniors again don't have any expectations it's you you're starting basically with a clean slate and i think that's the best way to approach it because then you have you have no baggage riding on you right and that's that's when i look back at it that's when i played my best tennis so that's obviously the advice that i would pass on to the younger generations and i would also say that uh, you have to be extremely persistent um because there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows and there are times where you know you don't really know if this is the right decision so whatever it is and i feel like you need to do whatever you need to do to um, clear your mind but uh, yeah like they say you fall down but you have to get up again so i think and obviously hard work there's uh, zero shortcut you have to work your ass off there's no other option cuz uh, if you're not doing it someone else next to you is doing it twice as hard as you so i mean you've got to work hard and uh, now you're trying your your hand at coaching though part time so like whatever you said now is it the influence because of you started coaching or okay how is your experience uh, being on the other side all um, these years okay. you've been a player and now a coach yeah firstly like i really have to thank uh, rohan and abita and even the sports school uh, for you know allowing me to train there and have this ex- amazing opportunity where i can do both um you know uh, train for myself and also try my hand at coaching so i think that uh, i was a little i i always enjoy being on court in whatever uh, occupation it may be uh, it makes me really happy and i wasn't sure about how it would be like there's certain things you already know and i think that um, you know the disconnect between the player and the coach is something that i had to realize that you know i couldn't go with the player mentality to coach because and that's something that you know you've been teaching me as well with uh, with everything that we've been doing and <coughs> what i saw some comment dry ball here yeah. the only <laughs> joined in late yeah <clears throat> yeah so i mean i feel that uh, uh it's definitely given me a lot of uh, um insight to what i already knew but i never used to think about like you know just the it just it showed me how important the basics are like as a player when you play for so long you forget about the smallest things and your brain gets a little too complicated and you think of so many things especially when you're on court i mean it's not like it happens all the time but it does happen sometimes but when i look back at this and i realize okay 
you know what would a coach say it's so what would you say to another kid it's so simple like that's what you need to do so it kind of translates that way and i think it's helping me a lot and uh, yeah i'm just i'm just hungry to keep learning more Sharma, it was really wonderful listening to you, and uh, you know, as your friend said, uh, the the energy and the excitement you bring into a conversation is phenomenal. So, thank you so much for your uh, time, and uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you in your tennis, in your all your creative sides. I mean, let everything <laughs> blossom, and I'm sure uh, the best years are yet to come. All the very yeah. best, and uh, thank you, Sharma. Thank Good you night. so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you for having me, and thank you to Indian Tennis Daily and everyone that joined in and you know left some amazing comments and made me laugh. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this chat, and yeah, take care, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, each and everyone who joined in and uh, contributed and made this conversation so interesting. Thanks a lot. Good night, guys. Thank you. See you. Bye.